Welcome to Old Treasures Made New, your devotional podcast on the go or at home, where we read the scriptures and reflect on them with those from the past. Today we'll be reading Matthew 21, verses 12 to 22, and then through J.C. Ryle's expository thoughts on Matthew. Please take a moment to pause and to ask the Holy Spirit to bring understanding and to apply what we hear. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 12 to 22. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant, and they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read, Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise? And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. In the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, Truly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. This is the word of the Lord. We have in these verses an account of two remarkable events in our Lord's history. In both, there was something eminently figurative and typical. There was an emblem of spiritual things. Beneath the surface of each lie lessons of solemn instruction. The first event that demands our attention is our Lord's visit to the temple. He found his father's house in a state which too truly reflected the general condition of the whole Jewish church, everything out of order and out of course. He found the courts of that holy building disgracefully profaned by worldly transactions. Trading and buying and selling were actually going on within its walls. There stood dealers ready to supply the Jew who came from distant countries with any sacrifice he wanted. There sat the money changers, ready to change his foreign money for the current coin of the land. Bulls and sheep and goats and pigeons were there exposed for sale, as if the place had been a market. The jingling of money might have been heard, as if these holy courts had been a bank or an exchange. Such were the scenes that met our Lord's eyes. He saw it all with holy indignation. He drove out all those who sold and bought. He overthrew the money changers' tables. Resistance there was none, for men knew that he was right. Objection there was none, for all felt that he was only reforming a notorious abuse, which had been basely permitted for the sake of gain. Well might he sound in the ears of the astonished traitors as they fled from the temple. It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Let us see in our Lord's conduct on this occasion a striking type of what he will do when he comes again the second time. He will purify his visible church as he purified the temple. He will cleanse it from everything that defiles and works iniquity and cast every worldly professor out of its pale. He will allow no worshiper of money or lover of gain to have a place in that glorious temple which he will finally exhibit before the world. May we all strive to live in that daily expectation of that coming. May we judge ourselves that we be not condemned and cast out in that searching and sifting day. We should often study these words of Malachi. Who can endure the day of his coming? And who will stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. Malachi 3, verse 2. 
The second event that demands our attention in these verses is our Lord's curse upon the fruitless fig tree. We are told that being hungry, he came to a fig tree in the way and found nothing on it but leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. This is an incident almost without parallel in our, all of our Lord's ministry. It is almost the only occasion in which we find him making one of his creatures suffer in order to teach a spiritual truth. There was a heart-searching lesson in that withered fig tree. It preaches a sermon we all will do well to hear. That fig tree, full of leaves but barren of fruit, was a striking emblem of the Jewish church when our Lord was upon the earth. The Jewish church had everything to make an outward show. It had the temple, the priesthood, the daily service, the yearly feasts, the Old Testament scriptures, the rituals of the Levites, the morning and evening sacrifice. But beneath these goodly leaves, the Jewish church was utterly desolate of fruit. It had no grace, no faith, no love, no humility, no spirituality, no real holiness, no willingness to receive its Messiah, John 1.11. And hence, like the fig tree, the Jewish church was soon to wither away. It was to be stripped of all its outward ornaments and its members scattered over the face of the earth. Jerusalem was to be destroyed. The temple was to be burned. The daily sacrifice was to be taken away. The tree was to wither away to the very ground. And so it came to pass. Never was there so a type, so literally fulfilled. In every wandering Jew, we see a branch of the fig tree that was crushed. But we may not stop here. We may find even more instruction in the event we are now considering. These things were written for our sakes, as well as for the Jews. Is not every fruitless branch of Christ's visible church and a dreadful danger of becoming a withered fig tree? Beyond doubt it is. High ecclesiastical profession, without holiness among the people, overweening confidence in councils, bishops, liturgies, and ceremonies while repentance and faith have been neglected, have ruined many a visible church in time past and may yet ruin many more. Where are the once famous churches of Ephesus and Sardis and Carthage and Hippo? They are all gone. They had leaves, but no fruit. Our Lord's curse came upon them. They became fig trees. The decree went forth, hew them down. Daniel 4, verse 23. Let us remember this. Let us beware of church pride. Let us not be high-minded, but fear. Romans 2.20 Finally, is not every fruitless professor of Christianity in dreadful danger of becoming a withered fig tree? There can be no doubt of it. So long as a man is content with the leaves of religion, with a name to live while he is dead, and a form of godliness without the power, so long his soul is in great peril. So long as he is satisfied with going to church or chapel and receiving the Lord's Supper and being called a Christian, while his heart is not changed and his sins not forsaken, so long is he daily provoking God to cut him off without remedy. Fruit, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit is the only sure proof that we are savingly united to Christ and in the way to heaven. May this sink down into our hearts and never be forgotten. That is the end of Ryle's expository thoughts for these verses. Let us carefully consider what we have heard today, and may the Lord be pleased to bring the growth for His glory.